Hello and welcome to Daily Schedule 101. I'm your professor, Guillaume Temkit. And today I'm going to be taking you through all the things that us seminarians do uh, from dusk till dawn here at St. Minor. In the mornings, the first thing that we have is breakfast followed by morning prayer, which is at 8 o'clock. After that, it's off the class. We'll usually have two classes. After that, we'll have mass followed by lunch. And then after that, we'll have a little bit of time in the afternoon free other than when we go back to the chapel to meet for evening prayer followed by dinner. And during that free time, that is when we'll uh, take time to study, catch up on homework and papers and such, or uh, go work at our work study programs. I myself work at Project Warm, which is where we chop wood and donate it to charity. Eric is a tutor who will go down to the Mater Center and help uh, different seminarians with uh, projects that they're working on for their own classes. Now, this is the schedule that we'll have on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. However, on Wednesdays, that's a very, very special day that we'll get to, into in a minute, where we have Apostolic slash Ministry Day. Now, Wednesdays are what we call our ministry days, where we go out into the community, to various churches, nonprofits, charities, etc., and serve the people of God. So this year, I am assigned to the parish of St. Joseph's in Corridon, Indiana, where I'm going to be serving at a daily mass and then helping to teach a confirmation prep course for um, sixth graders who are preparing for confirmation. The afternoons are a lot more flexible. Sometimes we have an open afternoon and we can spend the time studying, working out in the gym, going for a walk, hanging out with friends. Other times we have an elective in the afternoon, a chance to focus more on a particular interest we have. This semester I'm taking an elective on iconography. I've also taken electives on Latin, various scripture courses, etc. And the other big thing that we have as well are a couple different house jobs. Um, just opportunities for guys to make a couple bucks while contributing something to the community, either down at the woodlot, at the coffee shop at Jack's, the Unstable, or at the Mater Center. So, a lot of people ask, since we're from New Hampshire, what are we doing in Indiana? Why are we sending to a seminary in Indiana? We get that question all the time. Well, we're here in Indiana because a fairly important person is also studying at this seminary. This fellow right here, Peter Labashi. Okay, so people who are watching very closely for continuity errors may notice something slightly different about Andre's hair. <laughs> we also have Father Rory Trainer, Father David Gagnon. Hair loss is an important part of seminary formation. Yes. People often ask me, hey Guillaume, since now you're wearing the collar, you've been promoted, so to speak, what do you do with your ties? Well, we form them into great artwork, like this piece right here. No, the Mickey Mouse tie was not mine. That must have been somebody from Tennessee. message for any men who might be discerning back in the diocese? First off, I would say definitely get involved with the parish life because I think the parish life in particular really shows kind of what the life of the priest is, is like, at least what we can see is what the priest does. Um, get in, involved with serving mass, get involved with, with catechism is really big, especially if you're teaching catechism because um, then you're learning as you're teaching but also uh, young adult ministry or children's ministry, um, get involved with like the Knights of Columbus or Respect Life Committee, um, and definitely go to Mass a lot. Definitely go to daily Mass and help in any way, lecture if you can. 
because not only is service like that a charity and like learning to love Christ and love the church, but it's also a really good way to learn a lot about yourself as a human person, you know, and then what you learn about yourself, obviously, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, um, if you say you're celebrating, say, say you're serving mass and you're not enjoying it at all, probably maybe an indicator that God might not be calling you to the priesthood. So I would just really encourage you to get involved with your parish, um, talk to a priest, see what you can do. Absolutely. Reach out, find whatever support you can and really pursue that vocation and really consider it. Um, don't just rush it away and say that's for somebody else because it could be for you. Yeah, and on top of that, we we have to say, and we would definitely all say, you've got to pray. Of okay. course. you got to pray, talk to your spiritual director, get a spiritual director, um, and definitely, definitely dive into prayer because we pray a lot in, in the seminary. Oh, yes. Is there any message that you guys would like to give to our benefactors? Yes, to all of you uh, watching this, we want to just say thank you all so much for your support. We're incredibly grateful for that. And thank you above all for um, your prayers. Um, please know we're praying for you guys every day. Um, it really does mean a lot to hear from all the parishes um, and all of you back in the, in the diocese. Your letters and your prayers are very deeply appreciated. We are rolling. Yeah, so to all of our benefactors, I just want to think, okay, I can't even focus right now. Like, like I'm looking at Andre's new haircut and that's just distracting me completely. I wonder if I should have cut it. I was starting to look like Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey, I think it looks good. Yeah. Father Matt's probably glad that you hit, cut your hair. I don't know. I like, really had the flow going there. Yeah, you had like a wooden wall. <laughs> yeah. Great. It was. It was great. It was good. Good thing this isn't on video. It's really embarrassing. Well, that would be terrible. Yeah. Right. <laughs>